Welcome back. Check out this video by Grant Cardone. Buying a house, worst investment you'll ever make in your entire life. Let's say you paid a million dollars for a house. Average house here is 576. 576 is what you paid. Now you need 12% for broker fees. Let's say you keep the house 10 years. You need 10% in maintenance fees. It's 1% a year maintenance fees. It's about 2% in property taxes every year. That's 20%. Two times 10 is 20. And it's probably 7% to the bank, so that's 70%. Total those up, it's 112%. $576,000 home will have to be sold for $1.2 million in 10 years. You're not going to sell it for that. To break even, dead money, and you had to put 100 grand down to do this deal. They're serving a master. They'll borrow money from the Bank of America. And then if they can get some more money, they'll have a little retirement account that funds Wall Street. This is a big game, bro. Rather than buying one house, rent where you live and take that 100 grand and go buy a piece of real estate where other people live. I just don't need to own a home on the way up. I need to own assets that pay me on the way up. And once I have enough cash flow from the assets, then if I want to go buy a house or a watch or a car, I buy it out of the passive income. All right, Kirby, what do you think about what he said about buying a house? It's funny. I just posted this on our Discord channel. And and I just read it verbatim as I posted it. Uh, somebody on Twitter posted it up. But the numbers align pretty closely with Grant Cardone saying. It says, when you buy a house for 400 k and sell it for 800 k 30 years later, your profit is not 400000 You actually lose money. But most of you are not ready for this conversation. And then they just break it down. Purchase price, 400000 Closing cost, 20000 Mortgage interest, 400000 Property taxes, 144000 Insurance, 45000 Maintenance, 120000 Selling costs, 40000 So the total cost is $1.169 million. And this is over 30 years if you held up property for over 30 years. So you lose $369,000 for what they say is a safe investment or the best investment is a house that you live in. That's, that's, it's true. I mean, a lot of homeowners, you know, they always tell people it's better to buy than rent. Uh, I know people will probably be looking at this video and say, oh, they're preaching a book. They want people to go out there and rent. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is understand the cost that's involved. When you pay in a mortgage, a mortgage is the least amount you will pay that month to live in that property. When you pay rent, the rent is the most that you're going to pay per month living in that property. So let's just use that analogy from the Twitter feed from James Murphy. It says your loss will be three hundred and sixty nine hundred thousand dollars over that 30 years. Now, if you divide that. 369,000 and you divide it by 360 months, which is 30 years, that's $1,025. If you know, you're a single person, $1,025 for some parts in the United States, you can get a single, I mean, not a, yeah, a single bedroom apartment or something like that over 30 years. And you'll still have your 400K still sitting here and you don't live 30 years. Now you have 400K. So, I mean, I'm not, Again, I'm not saying that everybody should rent. I'm just saying when you buy and understand the real cost that go into buying. But I also agree with Grant Cardone. If you buy property, especially house hacking, if you if you don't have a house just coming out of your mom, your parents' house, and then or you're looking to buy a house, I will always say, you know, buy a duplex, buy a triplex, buy a fourplex, live in one, rent out the rest. Probably repeat that one more time live in one, rent out the rest. Now, if you bought two fourplexes, now you have eight units and have those eight units, have the cash flow from eight units to buy the property that you're going to live in. Instead of you just working to pay, working to pay, working to pay, working to pay, and then you're in this perpetual cycle. So I agree a lot with what Grant Cardone say. Sometimes he get like over egregious with it. You know, maybe you need to start by, you got to start with 30 unit property. No, you can do a short and simple one to four units, but that's the way I would go about it to buy a forever home or buy a $400,000 home. I would do it just like that. Yeah. And I, all, I think that it all starts with understanding what it means and what it is to buy a home, understanding that it is mm -hmm. going to be a, um, a liability and once you mm -hmm. understand that understand that then by purchasing a liability it should be understood that 
that's going to be a luxury purchase. So can you afford a luxury purchase? And like he said, I don't know if he mentioned in this clip, but I know, I think he did mention it in the clip at the end, but where once you've made cash flow and you've built up, you know, your investment portfolio, then if you want to buy a house or whatever, then, or a car or a watch, then go ahead and do it. But in the beginning, for most people, it's going to be a setback because of all the expenses that you mentioned and there's really no return and i think that this covid era the anomaly that it presented i think has everyone confused thinking that that's how properties appreciate and in reality that's not the kind of equity that you see in homes across history you know that like my my boss at work was uh, actually saying that uh, a house that he had in Kentucky, he had bought for, I think he mentioned 130 and then they sold it like, I don't know how many years later for like 145, like that's kind of more so like how properties appreciate. So in, in that term, I mean, yeah, you're taking a loss because people, they'll use the excuse all the time that, oh, well, at least with the mortgage, I'm paying myself rather than rent i'm just giving it to the landlord but those first like 10 years you're just paying interest like the equity you're paying in a mortgage in the first 10 years is like very little it's like maybe 10 percent towards equity the rest is just all interest and people don't see that they don't understand the mortgage breakdown of how you're paying it so it's a complete loss unless you're going to live there your whole 30 years until the mortgage is paid off. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. And it's and I have no problem with people buying homes, but understand what it is. You're buying shelter. If you love a location and you love the school district, if you love everything, the the amenities that's in the area and you want to stay there for a lifetime, stay, do it. But this miss uh nomer that oh i'm gonna buy this house and then and you said it best the COVID era made people think that they can go flip houses with 30 and 40 percent uh ask all those people that's on uh they have their house up for sale in florida right now literally if you go on zillow and you bring up the state map of florida and then you look for houses for sale within just leave the the price range wide open and then in the comment section, search for motivated seller, you'll find over 5,000 sellers that's motivated to sell their properties because they thought that they can still buy in, two, in 2022, 2023, and then the price was going to appreciate 30, 40%. And they're not getting that appreciation. Some places is when the prices have went down, actually, since the COVID era. In my neighborhood, in, in general, the prices went down since the COVID era. I know neighbors that just moved in, you know, they paying, you know, they paid hundreds of thousands over what the price is now. And it's not no recession going on in my neighborhood. It's just that's how crazy it was. And they thought they can get it, put it for a higher price. And then the price actually wasn't there. And that's how a lot of Florida is right now. Uh, especially look at, uh, you know, the Cape Coral area, stuff on the east, east, I mean, the west coast of Florida. South, southwest coast of Florida, the price the price collapse is going down in a major way. Look at Austin, Texas, price dropping 25, 30 percent on properties. So the average for historical reference here, you know, the have the average price appreciation is about three to six percent a year. Historically, that's what it is. It's not the 30, 40 percent that we've seen during the COVID era. And a lot of people got trapped in there watching the social media people talking about, oh, yeah, you can buy it, hurry up and flip it. And then now they're sitting in there in a conundrum, especially here in Florida, where they have all these properties that they, one, they couldn't get the rent that they thought they was going to get for it. And then two, now with, you know, the, the property taxes and the insurance rates going up so high, the cost of living these properties after they bought them at breakneck rates, thinking that they could flip it, it didn't materialize. And it didn't materialize. And now they're sitting there suffering, wondering what the hell to do. So understand the dynamics of what's going on. Don't take a little uh, blimp or clip in time and think that's the historical norm.
but I agree with you 100%, Alex. The COVID era did uh, trap a lot of people in bad situations. So that being said, guys, if you like this video, uh, hit the like button. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.